So the first thing that we really want to do is quick navigation. So we're going to bank back over here to, uh, I'll stick on, on 16 so we can see my fader here. Now, modify these four buttons are going to be effects 1, effects 2, effects 3, and effects 4. That's essentially sends on fader. All right, so I've got all three of these effects unmuted. And to get into sends on fader mode, we essentially have these four buttons and these six buttons. And that's going to directly correlate to your sends that we've always had up here in the XR app, these six and these four. So these four right here are going to be effects one, two, three, and four, sends on fader. So if I'm on and looking at channel 16, I can flip to sends on fader. You'll see the flip button here, so we know that we're not mixing to left and right. We are flipped to sends on fader. I can send channel 16 through the effects send into the reverb. And you can hear that, obviously. And I can come over here. Here's effect number two, which is a longer reverb. Effects number three, and that's my delay. And that's my delay. And that's my delay. And number four for me is an insert on the combinator, so that's not going to do anything. So this is sends on fader, one, two, three, and four for the effects. That works out great. You'll get a, the hang of that and quickly be able to flip through your channels. Now, one thing I don't like up here is the fact that we can't see the names of the channels. And I put in a request for that to be looked at. It makes no sense for me to see channel six and not realize, well, is that my Tom or my hi-hat? Or... So we're going to need to see on the triple strips what we are sending to faders. And it's a little bit less relevant to know whether we're post or not. So... That's how we're going to do sends on fader for the effects. And same thing with your monitor mixes, one, two, three, four, five, and six. In our case, we're going to run four monitor mixes, one, two, three, and four. We don't use five typically, and six is my sub. So let's take a look here. If I want to send my vocal into monitor one, aux one, you'll see it go up here in the application on yellow, monitor one, monitor two, Three, four, five for me is blacked out. And of course, six is my sub. So pretty cool there. Very handy. Now there's one thing that I've noticed when flipping back and forth between sends on fader mode, the flip mode, and getting out of that and back to our global view or our standard mixing mode. So let's say that I'm mixing my vocal which is up at Unity, and I'm on this fader, and I've got the vocal coming in, and I'm going up to Unity, and I pull this back a little bit where I don't want much. If I let go of this and then come over here, my vocal just cut down. That's now my vocal level. Check one, two, and it's really confused. All right, so it's back up. So there's some confusion going on right there that we're going to have to look at. So what happened there was when I was in flip mode and I had my reverb down here, I did not lift my finger off of that. I released and got out of flip mode. The fader didn't go anywhere. If I touch that again, if I touch that, it, it jumped down and it stayed there. So I'm not sure how to fix that, but it does need to be fixed. If not, you'd have to remove your hands from all the faders every time you were flipping in and out of sends on fader to the global left-right mode. All right, so that takes care of that. Uh, these buttons here are your mute groups, one, two, three, and four. They give you a readout there. And by the way, you did see bus one, bus two, bus three up in the display. And effects one, effects two, that H is the best they can get on an X. So effects one, two, three, and four, and buses. And uh, great Shortcuts here to get to mute groups. So mute one, two, three, and four. Function seven and eight are your X and Y. Same thing over here with your X, Y. And that's turning auto mix off and on on your X, Y. And you can assign X, Y in one of the other parameters up here. We'll go over that. Five and six are not being used. And function one, two, three, and four, these are how you edit your four effects units. When I hit F1, it's going to control all the parameters for the verb on FX1. And uh, I've asked them to see if there's a way to make these things pop up. In other words, have the application follow what we're doing. If I go to effects number one, 
let that pop up. If we, it should be in preferences. If we don't want it, we can uncheck it. But having the app always follow the X Touch would be a good function. So if you look up here, you'll see that you've got three pages for the vintage reverb, and I've got everything correlating here. You can see me change my reverb, delay time, decay, the size, etc. I can flip to the second page, have more access. And if you go into effects number three, another cool thing is, uh, let's go ahead and turn effects three on. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check. Check one, two. Check. Check one, two. All right, so I've got sends on fader. Effects three is up. And now I can come up here to effects number three, F3. And I can control that. Under tap, one, two, three, four. Check one, two. So the record button is tap. Turn that back off. Go back to three. So the record button under the delay time is a tap tempo. So it's a cool shortcut to always remember that's your tap tempo there. We've got two pages of parameters for delay. So you'll get used to that. Again, uh, effects one, two, three, and four. The uh, combinator has five pages of effects parameters. So we'll get used to that as well. And again, five and six are not used. And seven and eight engage your XY for auto mix. All right, so um, once we're finished with using any of the sends on fader shortcuts, we can hit the button again to get out, or we can hit flip to get out, or we can hit global view to get out. So those are three different ways you can get out of the sends on fader mode. Now realize that when you're on sends on fader, that's flashing, so you realize these faders are not mixing your left, right. They are sending, sending the, the information to either an effects bus or one of your auxiliary buses. Okay, so make sure you're back to home. All right, so the next thing to look at are all these buttons. Again, when you select one of these, the encoder assigned functions will change out of panning left, right uh, into a particular function. These names don't actually match up since they're doing special things. So if we hit track, uh, the first thing you're going to notice is it's going to basically be very similar to what's going on in our our channel overview here, where you can select, and I'll go ahead and select my channel number 16, and channel 16 here. So here, we're able to select the input, input is 16, and it's also gonna change our, our input gain. So this is the main area, just like your head amp at this point. So phantom power is on, I've got 45 dB of gain on the microphone, and that's the same thing that we're seeing over here on the mic gain and phantom power on over here. There's also a function, um, how you turn phantom power on is push down and hit the record button. So I just turned phantom power on on the next channel. So phantom power is on, and then where gain is at zero, I can turn my gain up on that channel or down. And I can also push in to change the input. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to be careful of. You know, right now, channel 15 is getting its input from 13. So I'm gonna push down and turn, and now I've got 14 and 15 and 16 back. All right, and the other thing you can do here is, is flip. If you just hit the record, it toggles between USB and the actual line in. And remember, if you push this button and hit record, it's the function to turn on phantom power. And the P, we'll show you that. So phantom power off, USB off and on. So a couple of different keystrokes you're going to have to remember there. And the uh, cheat sheet in the manual that you downloaded with the download is going to help you remember all that. So there's four different functions here. Okay, so that's all for the track button. Pan and surround is um, getting you back to pan, which is the same thing you had before. But the surround is actually an assign and all these red buttons mean that you're assigned to left, right. So it's going to be very important. Big warning, if you are ever in the pan surround mode, be careful not. And I just unassigned myself to left, right, so you couldn't hear me. So if you ever get lost and you don't know you're here and you're thinking that something weird's going on here and you start doing this, you're cutting off that channel to the main left, right. 
Uh, EQ is pretty simple. We have a selected channel. We've got two pages of EQ. These two red buttons are very important. That's how you turn the EQ off and on on my channel. And this is the high pass filter off and on. And you can hear the bass come on at 140 and you can hear that coming out. So make sure you always realize that when you're in EQ, you probably want to see both of these here, or at least that one, of course. And then up here, we're going to have our four band parametric or however you have it set. Something that's kind of funny is the, the way they have programmed this is right now I'm on my low band and I can boost or gain in order to get to change the actual frequency. I would have assumed we would hit this and now it would highlight 124 and I can turn 124, but that's not the way it works. You have to actually push and hold and that's a pretty awkward procedure. I've never seen a device work that way. So you have to actually push in and while you're pushed, you have to turn. I have to let up, readjust my fingers, push again, turn some more, let up, push again. So I'm not so sure that, all right, yeah, so I'm not so sure that that's the best option there. Um, I'm going to suggest that we just toggle parameter one, toggle parameter two, and we don't have to hold the button down the whole time we're twisting. It's pretty cumbersome. And in order to get to the next two parameters on the low, we do have to shift pages to the second page. And now that's going to allow us to change our cue, which is the two point here. And it'll allow us to actually change the type of EQ we have, parametric or any of our low shelf and any of our over here. So parametric is good. So that's how we get to all four parameters of the EQ section all the way up to the high shelving. And SENS will allow you to have access to a particular selected channel. In this case, it's channel 16. This is not being used. It's just a guide that says bus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if you don't want to use SENS on fader mode, you can go to SENS and you have a quick access to the SENS. Now keep in mind, this is not the SEND. And if that happened to be a lead vocalist, you're jacking his vocal up in the main. So if you're not in SENS on fader mode, you know, this is your mix going to left, right. And SENS just allow these rotary encoders to become the SENS. And if I turn this up here, you'll notice on the screen that I am controlling monitor one, two, three, and four, and subs on my vocal here. So just keep that in mind. Don't mess with your faders down here. They're always left, right, unless you're in a flip mode. And that's what sends do. There's no other pages there. Plugins are going to allow you to do your effects sends the same way we just did. So this is now controlling my effects, number one, and delay. Okay. So sends or your buses and plugins are the same thing as coming down here and doing sends on fader. And lastly, are the is the rest of our channel strip. Three pages, and that's going to be the same thing as going into our gate. So if I've got gate here, I can control the threshold, as you see. And I can go to the next page and go to the compressor. I'm on negative 18. I can adjust that and you can see that I'm adjusting my compressor get that back up to 18 and lastly I've got control over the assignments in the in the mains tab here so I can assign the auto mix to X or Y if it's turned on F7 and F8 over here so they're now on and I can assign this channel to either X or Y Okay, I can change the weighting. And over here, it's not very apparent on what this does, but this is going to assign you to DCAs and mute groups. So if I want to take my channel, assign it to DCA1, which is off, uh, I would go ahead and do one, two, three, and four. I can also assign them to mute groups, one, two, three, and four. Now, if I come back here and use my shortcuts for mute groups, which we're back here, that's one. Number two, here comes three. 
Okay, so that muted me because I was assigned to all four. So keep that in mind. We've got DCA assignments and mute group assignments down here. So that gets you to most of the controls that you're going to need on individual channels. At this point, that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to sit around here for a few days and get used to this. It's working pretty great. A few suggestions, a few things that I thought were kind of weird, we'll see. But the beauty is this is just version one, and they can keep mapping and adding more and more function. Not only function to the program, but also as they do that, more ways to control those functions with the X-Touch. All right, I hope that gives you a quick overview of how this is working. If you have any questions, let us know on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and definitely make sure you check out our Behringer user group on Facebook.